Hey, let us talk about mythology again. This time, our journey brings us into the field of demonology. And we're better to start then with the seven princes of hell. You've probably heard of the seven princes of hell. Especially if you have come across discussions about Lucifer. This idea isn't directly from any scripture. But it's something that scholars have been trying to explain for the past 600 years. Today, we'll dive into some of these ideas, mostly looking at a classification system by Peter Binsfeld. His system connects demons to the seven deadly sins. A theme perfect for exploring nightmares and hellish imagery. But first, as always, please like this video and subscribe if not done so already. Now, with that being said, let's get right into it. Beginning with Peter Binsfeld. He was a German bishop, born around 1540 and 1545. As a kid, he was smart enough to be sent to Rome to study. And when he returned, he became a key figure in anti-Protestant campaigns. But what really put him on the map was his role in the witch trials of Trier, from 1581 to 1593. During this time, he wrote a lot about witches, and get this, even believing that confessions obtained through torture were totally legit. Absolute nonsense. In 1589, he published his list of the princes of hell, linking each one to a deadly sin. First up we have Lucifer, the Prince of Pride. According to Binsfeld, Lucifer's pride was his downfall, as it led him to think he could rule heaven. Obviously, that didn't work out, and he was cast out, becoming a symbol of the dangers of too much pride. Some think Lucifer is the leader of the seven princes, Though others separate him from Satan entirely. Fun fact, some even replace Lucifer with another fallen angel, like Azazel. Next on the list is Mammon, the embodiment of greed. By the way, his name literally translates to money, so it's pretty clear what he is all about. In scripture, Mammon is more of a concept than a being, but during the Middle Ages, Artists and writers started to personify him as a demon. Mammon was seen as one of the princes of hell, who would trap those obsessed with wealth. He is sometimes mixed up with Belzebub. But while they are both tied to greed, Belzebub is more about gluttony. Next, Asmodeus. He takes the crown for lust. Most of what we know about him comes from the book of Tobit and some Talmudic tales. In one story, he falls in love with a woman named Sarah and kills seven of her husbands before they can consummate their marriage. Not a great start. The eight Gaido, Tobias, was spared thanks to some handy advice from none other than the archangel Raphael. Osmodeus is also said to have married Lilith, and of course I will make a video about her as well very soon. Making her his demon queen. His appearance can vary, but he's often a part man, part animal hybrid. Now the next one might surprise you, the Leviathan. The Leviathan is the prince of envy. When most people think of Leviathan, or Leviathan, they picture a sea monster. And you would be absolutely right. But, in question demonology, the Leviathan is linked to envy and punishment. Some, like Thomas Aquinas, thought Leviathan's job was to swallow those guilty of envy. Fair enough. In Anglo Saxon art, though, the gates of hell were sometimes shown as the gapping mouth of a monster. Another nod to the Leviathan. Now we come to Belzebub. He is the Lord of Gluttony. But you might also know him as the Lord of Lies. He has been tied to many different civilizations and stories, often associated with Lucifer. In the Testament of Solomon, he is a fallen angel 
who turns humans into sin, while John Milton made him second in command to Lucifer in Paradise Lost. Although it's unclear why Binswell hacked him as the brains of gluttony, some say it's because of his association with excess and false gods. An absolute no-no in Christianity. Now we have Satan himself, the Prince of Wrath. Benfield's version refers to the Christian idea of Satan, of course, especially popular from the 16th century onward. During the Middle Ages, Satan was portrayed as weak and pitiful, but as the fear of witches and sorcery grew, so did the fear of Satan. By the time Benfield was around. Satan was seen as a major player, especially in the hysteria around witchcraft. And lastly, Balthagor, the Prince of Sloth. He is not just lazy, though. He is a master manipulator, convincing people to invent clever gadgets that make them rich, before snatching it all away. Balthagor, in taking many forms, changing his appearance to fit the situation. He might not seem as terrifying as the others, but trust me, his cunning nature makes him dangerous. So, there you have it—the seven princes of hell. Of course, there are tons of different classifications, and this is just one of many. But it's a fascinating way to look at the deadly sins and their connection to demonic forces. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.